So in the future, we hope to see increased salmon runs, you know, and survival of the salmon. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, it's important to us, it's important to Calus tribe, important to our communities. So we're really hoping to see that, to see the structures really hold back some of the sediment and the gravels and make good places for uh, salmon to rear and uh, lay their eggs. Today we're in uh, Grays River. We're on the East Fork of the Grays River. We're looking at a 40 acre unit that we sold the timber to the Cowlitz tribe. The plan is to add structure to the river. And the idea of adding structure is to uh, retain gravels and sediment, you know, give the fish a place to spawn. And to do that, you have to imitate the natural processes of trees falling over in the river and then sediment collecting behind those logs. As part of the project, you know, the landowner has to agree to allow the project on their property. So we've taken that a step further by working with the Callus tribe and pointing out we have a, a timber sale nearby where they want to do the projects. They've done the project planning and we're facilitating. So the Calus Indian tribe is, is known as the salmon people. Salmon have always been one of their principal food sources, and this is an area that is very important to them. And it's it's a food species for them and a fish species that they are looking to recover. It's it's a part of their cultural identity, and it's a it's a focal species for them that that they'd love to see return in, in greater numbers. So the Grays River in general is a, a location that lacks a lot of infrastructure. So we're trying to go to the source of the problem and trap the sediment in the headwaters and try to regrade some of these stream beds, try to reconnect the floodplains and, and allow the sediment to sort as it would naturally. The first phase of this project was to acquire local trees from private landowners talked with Rainier and their foresters and identified this location as a future timber harvest. And this site in particular is 43 acres of trees that we have been able to harvest as whole trees. And being that it's adjacent to our restoration sites, it allows for easy transport and installation. And there are huge benefits to that. Rainier came to us and told us that there was a project with the Cowlitz Indian tribe coming up. So we came in and just figured out a way to be able to uproot these trees, be able to make it so that there was very little erosion. In this particular project, the root wad is what is going to um, disperse the water the, the best. So we started by tipping the trees over. We shook out the, the dirt that was in the root wads and tried to fill in the holes as best that we could. Then we smoothed out all the, the dirt that was on the ground and we tried to leave as much slash on the ground as we could to mitigate soil erosion so when the water hits the ground from the rain, it will disperse out through the ground and not create something that is running into our, into our streams, which we're here to protect. These trees that we're placing here emulate what would be in here naturally. And it's something that, that myself and the design engineers looked at as, is that's what we need to try to replicate. And that's what we're gonna try to do. For development of grants and, and, and grant applications, it's a pretty simple equation. You, you've gotta find a site that's degraded and is in need of outside assistance. And this location offers that. But if you don't have a landowner on board that's supportive of that effort, it, it's, it's a dead project. And that's something that Rainier has come through as a supportive landowner 
um, that's been mutually beneficial for both purchasing wood and then uh, placing this wood on the site. And that's something that's unique. And I, I hope to see that in other large timber firms as well, um, to see that we can work together and trying to restore these streams. Mm -hmm.